you would please, let's take our Bibles, and uh, we are going to turn to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, we're finishing up the first chapter of this book, 1 Peter, and we've been dealing with it verse by verse, we want to do it on the basis that everybody can take something away tonight and apply it to their life. So 1 Peter chapter 1. Written by the Apostle Peter, he's very, very different than he was in the Gospels when he was impetuous and brash and outspoken but not spirit-controlled. As he writes by inspiration, he is writing the very words of God, and he is writing to folks who are suffering but still wanting to serve the Lord. And there's a lot of that going around. There are a lot of people who, though suffering, still want to serve the Lord. And suffering is not an excuse to not serve the Lord or to stop serving the Lord. We're going to begin at verse 17 where we've been now for several weeks. Verse 17, and I'll read down through verse 21. All right? 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, and I am reading verse 17 through verse 21. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who by Him do believe in God, that raised Him up from the dead, and gave Him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Let's pray. Father, fill me now with the Holy Spirit. For the time that remains, Lord, I pray that something will be said or taught from the Word that each of us, as an individual believer, can take with us. If there's anyone here tonight who does not know Jesus Christ as personal Savior, I pray that this will be the night that they come to know Him in a personal way. I pray if there's anyone backslidden or wandering far from you, Lord, I pray that they'll come back to you by your grace as you draw them. Thank you for the truth of the Word of God. Thank you that it is for us, and thank you that it is powerful and life-transforming. We pray now in Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right. Now to quickly review, here we find in verse 17 that as born-again children of God, we have the privilege of calling God our Father. And uh, He is not partial toward anyone, but rather He treats us all in such a wonderful way that nobody has a right to complain. I like what Linda Hicks sings when she sings that great old song, He he treats me as if I were His only child. And He does. He treats us in a special way. How many of you have been blessed? Come on. Amen. Amen. And yet He keeps on blessing. He keeps on blessing. We're here on earth in a time of sojourning. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I'm not here to stay. I'm here for the purpose of being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. If you've been saved the Bible way, it is our privilege to represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we do so on a daily basis by the empowering and the enablements that He gives us. Now, we know that we were not redeemed with corruptible things, things that pass away as silver and gold from vain conversation received by tradition from our fathers. Now, this is a reference to the the Jews that may have been in the mix. And uh, they were brought up through a religion that is big on symbols and signs and types. And uh, a lot of things uh, to grab your attention, a lot of visuals. But rather, salvation is not based upon those signs and symbols and types. Those signs and symbols and types were to point them to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. As we had a moment of prayer on Sunday for uh, our Jewish friends that need Yeshua Messiah, need to be saved by trusting in Jesus Christ, we are still remembering that our gospel is to, to go to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And there are many people today who are trusting in a religious plan or program that will never get them to heaven. The only way you get to heaven is by a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And He wants to save you tonight. He wants to come into your heart. Now what did He do? He died on an old rugged cross. He shed 
intentionally shed every drop of blood. His blood was God's blood running through His veins. Incorruptible and perfect blood. And the blood of Jesus Christ keeps on cleansing and keeps on cleansing and keeps on cleansing and keeps on cleansing and and can save to the uttermost every single person that will come to God. He's the Lamb of God without blemish and without spot. Now we come to verses 20 and 21. And these are our verses, uh, our text for this evening. We see here our past, our present, and our future. If we are in fact in Christ, we're seeing our past, our present, and our future. The Bible says that God foreordained that Christ would redeem us by His blood. He foreordained it even before the foundation of the world. And the word foreordained means foreknown. It is used in three different ways. It is used to know something beforehand or ahead of time. God knows everything. God knows what we're going to think before we think it. And it also means to know something uh, in the sense of loving and accepting and approving. And God has accepted and approved of us on the basis of Jesus Christ's finished work. Thirdly, it means to predetermine something. Now with respect, those of us who will come to God, here's what's predetermined. I want you to see with me in Romans chapter 8. Go with me there, please, to verse number 29. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Hopefully this will clear up a lot of the fog on this subject. It says in Romans 8 and verse 29, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate, now notice it goes on, to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. When God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, God's program includes that those that come to God that are saved should not stop there. But we should go on and by His grace be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That we should behave and live the way God wants us to that will bring honor and glory to Him. The worst thing that we can be in this world outside of a lost, condemned sinner is a saved sinner that's still living like they're lost and condemned. And there are some folks who haven't quite gotten the, the grasp of this thing yet, and I want you to get it tonight, that God didn't save us simply to go to heaven. If that were the case, He was very cruel to leave us here. He saved us, and yes, we're going to heaven, but He saved us that on the trip, on the journey, we would influence others for heaven as well. He's got a plan and a program He's working out through us. It's not by our trying very hard, it's by our yielding to the Spirit of God. By allowing Him to live out of us. Young people, boys and girls, listen to me right now. God wants you. The Bible says that, uh, that, that our body belongs to Him. Paul says in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, to the world system, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind through the Word of God that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God has a plan for you. Now a lot of people say, I just, I want to know what God wants me to do. And they're, they're thinking in terms of the work that God has for them. God has a work for all of us to do. It is a high and holy privilege. But before we ever get sidetracked on thinking only about the mechanics of the work that God wants us to do, let us be first of all yielded and submitted to the will of God in our personal life. God wants you. You say, well, you know, I'm, I'm just this terrific person and when He got me, He got such a blessing. That's not it at all. It doesn't work that way at all. In fact, the bottom line is this, that when He got us, He's got a huge amount of work that has to be done on us. We have to be transformed. We have to be changed. And the way that we are changed, our mind, our thinking processes, all of that that I'm going to be teaching on in the Institute, all of that happens through the Word of God. Get into the Word as the Word of God washes and cleanses and changes and transforms. So whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. We need to think like Jesus and with Jesus. We need to live like Jesus as Jesus lives out of us. We need to be in the same attitude and the same frame of mind as Jesus Christ. Jesus went about doing good. 
Jesus thought of others. Jesus was looking for opportunities to serve. We need to have that same attitude as Jesus Christ. And so in the long, dark, distant past, God foreknew us. It says in 2 Timothy 2.19, mark it down, 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Now here it is. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The book of Proverbs tells us what wisdom and understanding are. It's taking that first exit ramp up off the, the, the highway of sin and getting off of that highway, getting out of that track, that, those traces of sin, getting out of that rut of sin, getting out by the grace of God and going God's way. That's what he wants. He wants a change in our direction, a change in our spirit, a change in our thinking, a change in our attitude. It's it's not like just adding Jesus to our old sinful life and going on our way, but it's a brand new transformation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God has made us brand new from the inside out. We ought to manifest it on the outside as we yield to God. Everybody you know that claims to be a Christian, a born-again Christian, we need to exhort in love. We need to tell them from the heart how much we care about them and we're praying for them and we have not yet arrived. We have not apprehended that for which we are apprehended, but we are praying for them to become what God wants them to be, to be conformed to what God wants them to be. Now that may sound like preaching. I was telling one of my my Timothys this week, Uh, about a certain situation and I said you just need to drip on that person constantly drip on that just keep dripping on them they'll know that you love them they'll know that you that you care about them but but speak the truth in love don't ever hold back Christian God has made us to be his mouthpiece and to speak for him do it in love not with a not with a uh, an ulterior motive but with a heart of love Jesus Christ has no other hands in this world but our hands. He has no other feet but our feet in this world. He has no other life but our life. He has no other voice but our voice. That's why He saved us and left us in this world. He said, I'm going to my Father, but greater than these shall ye do. He was talking about the great multitude of those that would come to God through Christ and be saved and be filled with the Spirit and would make such a difference in this world. I believe that, that there are higher callings than just winning uh, political elections. I believe there are higher callings. I believe every single day, every single day, it's not just midterm election or 2020 when we're in the balance. I believe we're in the balance every minute of every hour, every day on the job, in our neighborhood, where we shop. The people we cross paths with, there are folks right now, the hand that you're shaking, that hand might be burning in hell the next minute or five minutes or an hour from now. We have a responsibility and a high and holy privilege. And so we know what God has done for us in the past. Now here's here's what's going on now. In Mark chapter 1 and verse 15, we have the words of none other than the one who came to announce the kingdom of God. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. When the fullness of the time was come, Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 4, the fullness of the time, God sent forth His Son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. That's what He's done. He's fulfilled a plan so that we might be in a relationship with God. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The perfect will of God would be for us to present the gospel to everybody that we possibly can. So he has manifested his time, himself rather, in these last times, these last days. And He's done so in and through us. And finally, we have a glorious future. Not only the past and the present, but we have a glorious future. And that glorious future, that hope that we have, that holy confidence that we have, is because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you see that here? It says, 
who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. All of the New Testament preaching, you follow it, you read about it. It's resurrection preaching. It's, it's, uh, it's the fact that God's power not only raised Jesus from the tomb, from the grave, but that same power is available to, to uh, through us, touch the lives and hearts of so many other people. It's resurrection preaching. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 14, Knowing that He which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Wow. Powerful words. And this is the, His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son Jesus Christ. 1 John 3, 23. And love one another as He gave us commandment. How can I love somebody the way God wants me to love that somebody, apart from the power that He provides. How am I going to be able to fulfill God's perfect will with respect to, to those around me, apart from that resurrection power? That's His will for the future. His will is to continue to work through me, as it says in Philippians chapter 1, and verse number 6 until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to continue to perform that perfect will in and through us. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He hath wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places? The same power that raised Him up, the same power that places Jesus Christ in that position is the same power that's available. Young people, listen adults, the same power that's available to us to live the Christian life. Praise God. I am not left here to dangle in the wind on my own. I've got that enablement that He has promised, that He's given me, and that gives me great hope. And that gives me a holy confidence. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively or a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. These words we read when we first began our study some months ago. There in the first chapter and the third verse of First Peter. He's begotten us to a lively or a living hope. We are part of something which is alive and vibrant and it's empowered by the resurrection power provided to us. The same power that raised up Jesus from the dead. We've got a wonderful past, present and future in Jesus Christ and praise God for it. Would you bow your heads? You've been viewing a service at Central Baptist Church. We never dismiss the service without clearly presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is that Jesus came to this earth and sinlessly lived for 33 years before he voluntarily gave his life. He died on the cross, he was buried, he rose from the dead, and He's alive forevermore. Through the shedding of His blood and through His victory at uh, the, the empty tomb, Jesus Christ now offers salvation to you. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you pray right now from your heart to God and ask Him to save you? Something like this, Dear God, just pray, Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to pay for my sins. I deserve to pay for my sins. I believe Jesus died to save me. I believe Jesus died to save me. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Did you pray that prayer? Did you mean it? Wonderful. I want you to get in contact with us and let us know of your decision. Now, if you've already been saved, 
I want to encourage you to live the life that God would have you to live according to His Word. If you desire more instruction, more information, we'll be happy to supply it to you. We like to talk to you. The information is right here, and we'd love to speak to you. If you have any spiritual needs whatsoever, may God bless you.